Today on Techno Day on Life, we'll be looking at the Ingenious ECS 2512 FP. This switch has refined software with great cloud management features. Hardware includes 2.5 gigabit ports with power over Ethernet and SFP Plus ports that make it a switch to consider, especially if you do content creation or have heavy network and Wi Fi needs. Before we get started, for full disclosure, Ingenious did send me this unit for review. They did not pay me or look at this video before I published it. This channel is supported by affiliate links, so if you are interested in the Switch and supporting this channel, please check out my links in the description below. So if we take a look at the Switch from left to right, first we have the RJ45 control port, then power, fault, PoE, max lights, Next are LAN mode and PoE mode, LED mode switch, and a reset switch that you need to use a paper clip to activate. Next are eight 2.5 gigabit ports, and yep, that is 2.5 gigabit. Uh, though not as common yet, 2.5 gigabit is becoming more common and is definitely the future of switches. Ingenious also sells a Wi-Fi 6 access point that can take full advantage of the switch the access point has a 2.5 gigabit port to more than double the throughput compared to other Wi-Fi access points. For your desktop and laptops, now you can get a cheap 2.5 gigabit uh, USB-C adapter for your computer for less than $20. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in learning more about those. Other devices that can take advantage of the 2.5 gigabit ports are the newest versions of most network attached storage. Most NAS are now coming with 2.5 gigabit ports. And here are a few examples. So this is the QNAP TS932PX4G. And this is the Asus Store AS5202T. The switch also comes with four SFP Plus ports. These are 10 gigabit fiber ports. And to go along with that, the switching capacity of the switch is 120 gigs, so that means your switch will never be limited by not having enough bandwidth for the available ports. If we look at the side, we have some ventilation ports. The back has a slot for a power cord. Uh, it does have an internal power supply. The other side has two fans mounted internally. The fans are not loud, but they are on constantly uh, after the first few minutes. So let's take a listen to those. So let's take a look at the software now. So to access local control, we need our quick installation guide that we uh, received with our switch. So for local control, we want to make sure our computer is attached to our switch. Our switch is not connected to the internet. Uh, we turn off our computer, make sure the switch is turned off, turn on the switch, turn on the computer, and now we're going to change some settings. So we go to network connections on our machine, right click on the ethernet adapter that is attached to our switch, click on properties, and then we find internet protocol version four, click on, highlight that, and then click on properties. And so that for this next part, we're going to type in 192.168.0.10 and then down below that, we need 255.255.255.0. And then we click OK. And then we can close that. Then we can open up a browser. And then that will take us to the Ingenious uh, page. The first time you come to this, you'll have to log in. So the first time you log in, the login is username is admin and the password is password. Then you have to create a new password, and then this will be the password for the switch. So now we're logged into our switch, and so this is the local control of the switch. And so it's pretty simple. There's actually more uh, with the cloud features. When you log into your cloud account, you'll actually see more features. But let's quickly just go over this. So we have monitor with dashboard, real-time meters, statistics, max tables normal stuff for switches, logs, people, security. And you can see down below here, it says we're on the local web. Now, if we compare this to other switches that I've reviewed, uh, 
This one has about the same amount of features, but when we go to the cloud part, that's where we see where this ingenious shines, actually. Now, to get to the cloud part, we actually have to change our Ethernet settings again. Go back to automatic Ethernet setting, and we need to plug the switch uh, into the e Internet. And so once that's done, you'll see here it changed the connection type to this is my router. So we can close that. So now what we're going to be doing is going to the Ingenious Cloud and logging in there and then accessing our switch from there. So to get the Ingenious Cloud, you go to cloud.ingenious.ai and it will take you to this login screen. Then you'll be taken to this page where you'll add your first device in. Uh, so with the Ingenious Cloud, so there's basically two parts to it. So the basic version, which pretty much has everything, and then the pro version. And so the pro version is just adding a few different things. But let's take a look and see what's here first. So we have our dashboard. It shows our one switch. We don't have any access points uh, added at this time. But when you do, that's actually when you take advantage of them. So what I'll do is just quickly go through everything on the, the some of these things on the menu and then show you a, a demo example. So we have access point switches. Topology is your list of devices. And so right now we're just to have the internet connected to the switch. Uh, floor maps is where you add in floor maps. And it will show you where you are your device is located on a map or satellite and then you can add in floor pans which I'll show you in a second. Air guard you can see we can't access it yet due to it being a pro feature and clients. So every switch actually comes with a year subscription to the pro features and for the most part uh, what you're going to find is that after you set up like with the floor pans your access points you don't really need the pro features after that so uh, but if you do decide on the pro features the pro features are only twenty dollars a year at the moment uh, we have our task and reports users and then organization so there's your inventories and licenses security privacy restore backup restore backup is a pro feature so so how do you add the pro features? This is one thing that was tricky for me is you go to inventory and licenses, click on that. And then over here you can see it says assign license. So we're going to do that. And how you do that is you go to switches, require switch pro license, and then you apply your free pro license. Now let's take a look at how that whole system looks set up. So here we have a demo system set up. You can see we have three APs, six clients, eight switches, and gives us our utilization there. Now if we go over here go to our access points, now we can see all the information about our access points, our switches. So if we go to topology, here you can see all the switches are there. There's two access points here and there's one over here. Now with the pro feature you can actually see other devices attached and so here we have an unknown device, a different switch it looks like, and more unknown devices but it does give their MAC address so if you want to keep track of them. Maps and floor plans, again the map of where the devices are, floor plans. So you have to add in the floor plan to uh, actually get it on here which is pretty easy. Once you do you can expand it to see again your devices. On pro features you can add in different doors, walls, windows, things like that to see how they affect your Wi-Fi. It does have a heat map so if you click on heat map you can see your Wi-Fi coverage and how it's affected by different walls. You can add in layers and you can change things from 2 to 5 gigahertz or just show your physical IPs. Now if we look at an event log, we can see different events, system events, and configuration log. 
And then we have our sky key here. If we go down to our team, team members, we can see all the team members added. And now we can do that restore backup if we'd like. So who is this switch for and is it worth it? So as we see here, currently the price of this switch is $899, which seems to be on the high end for some switches. But if you take into account that it is the 2.5 gigahertz ports, it has the four SPF plus ports, which are 10 gigabit. And uh, this is a PoE switch. So who do I see this for? So say you are a place with a high amount of Wi-Fi usage, so then you can get the ingenious Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6 access point, and then uh, you have 2.5 gigahertz, gigahertz access point, uh, which could double more than double your throughput. Or say you are a content creator or a group of content creators who are sharing files or accessing a server uh, with uh, video files on it. So definitely it is worth them. Or if you just like uh, having the best of the best, then this is definitely the switch for you. And now the one thing to keep track of though is you definitely need it in the cabinets uh, because it is those fans are loud. And as you could hear when I was making this video, the the actually the switch is in a cabinet. And you can hear during different parts of this video that you can hear the fans even from the cabinet in the background noise. That's what that background whooshing is in the video. So you definitely have to have it isolated either in a different room or in a cabinet uh, if that's it. So having said all that, would I buy this myself with my own money? So I am a content creator, so I need that fast access to videos. So for me, I would definitely buy it, but again, it depends on your situation and the, you know, the cost factor. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.